Hey, 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 everybody. We are here at Classic Lanes in Greenfield, the Wisconsin Mixed Doubles Classic. Starting off at your opening match here. Got the team of Aaron Michaelfelder and Will Welch. They're our number four seeds. You're going to see Michaelfelder start off in a moment. Here on lane 13, they're taking on Jacob Kent and Courtney Ermish. We'll go over the rest of your top four momentarily. And the 10-pin stands in defiance of Michael Felder. Once again, $2 Phil here with you from Classic Lanes in Greenfield. Thanks to everybody that's joining us in on the live stream, or if you missed it originally. Hey, thanks for catching the replay. Some of the best bowlers in the state of Wisconsin, even a few from Illinois came up today. Catch some great mixed doubles action. Full house here at Classic Greenfield earlier in the day. Still half a full house at the bar. So Randy Janicki causing problems already at the bar. So... Just kidding, Randy. Michael Feller straight at the 10. Covers it up beautifully. And the mark's on the board for the team of Welch and Michael Felder. There, Courtney Irmish, you see, coach for the women's program, Division Three at Carroll University in Waukesha. Just started that program's inaugural season this year. And there you see... Didn't get a chance to rail after qualifying was complete. And the very light mixer, four falls late for Ermish, gets it to go. And Jacob Kent, a couple of collegiate team titles at Robert Morris University in Illinois back in the day for Kent. Take a look at that ball path. Already deep, as we said, we didn't Royal Oil from Middle Road, and he can't get the 8 10 to shake down. And leaves that very choppable 3 6 combination. Waiting in the wings for the winner of this match, our number two seed, Dave Bears, Katie Zwiefelhofer. And our top seeds today, and they were dominant all day long. Kristen Nieder and Ryan Zagar. Kent hooks it in, takes the two down. And now our first look this afternoon at Will Welch. Got to see Will a bit back at the tournament in Lucky Lanes at Milwaukee Open back in October, that weekend event we had there with Nick Crummel coming up on top in that event. There you see Welch deep already. And back-to-back -back team 10 pins. 
Welch, come on. Welch could have actually expected that messenger to get over there. No way. Wasn't going to happen. So he'll change that polyester ball. And you see his teammate, Mike Fuller, already waiting to get up. Mike Fuller, another player. Solid high school career back in the day here in the Milwaukee area. And moved out of town for college, moved back to the area a few years ago. And she's looking to get the first strike for her team. You see that deep line, even the ladies are getting into, and she almost gets a good break on the 6-10 to fall. Six pushes towards the 10, so it should be less choppable. She does happen to chop, but I think there'd be some type of bonus reward. But the only <laughs> the bonus reward that we have for the step player today, if we do get a Baker 300 game out here, it's $300 courtesy of Gina Darshevsky in Classic Lanes Greenfield. And we'll get that score corrected on the screen momentarily. Uh, look at that. Gina on the ball. She's bartending, changing scores, fixing things. Incredible proprietor here at Classic Lanes Greenfield. Irmish, we saw the light strike in the first. We'll see if there's any type of adjustment made here. In the third, rolls up nice. That one goes a little too long. Almost rolls the two out. Lots of faces in the crowd today. Still hanging around. Melissa Gertz and her and Brian Thompson, the alternates for the step player today, took fifth place in our 20-team 20 field, 20 field this afternoon. Like I said, we filled up the house here at Classic Lanes Greenfield. And let's see what Jacob Kent can do here. This pattern, even though it's Kegel's middle road, it's been chewed up. They had three regular team games and then two Baker doubles team games moving across the house. So lots of higher rev rates, both the men and the women. You take a quality pattern like this, tear it apart, and there is the second strike in four frames for Team Irmish Kent. Will Welch, he's a guy you can see still drilling balls on occasion. He first came to Milwaukee. He was working for Bowlers Mart up at Bolero. Now he's not working full-time in the bowling world anymore. And Welch, once again, can't get the 10 to go, and it may be time for some type of change, be it line, be it speed, be it ball, be it a combination of the three. Well, straight at the 10, and gets the right side, tickles it down. No strikes yet for Welch and Michael Felder, but the thing is, no doubles for the opponents. Everybody's staying clean. So just three pins, a disadvantage for Welch and Michael Felder getting into the beverage frame. And that needs some help. Almost, well, she had the 6-10 last time on that practically same hit in frame three. And now leaves just the 10. You see so many players nowadays using those interchangeable thumb grips, make sure they get the good feel from ball to ball, especially, especially with the spare ball, polyester. 
those thumbs drilled into a polyester ball can be a little bit slipperier than what players are used to, so you get the good feel, and that's not a good feel for Michael Felder. Is the first open frame for her team on the board here in the fifth frame. And Ermish has a chance here to really jump on getting her and Kent the big advantage here in the beverage frame. Once again, waiting in the wings for the winner of this match, Dave Bears, Katie is Wiefelhofer. Ermish looks light again, and you just see the hands get thrown up in frustration going, what's going on? 2, 4, 8, 10. Count's kind of important at this moment, but I could see her trying to hook it across the face of the two pin. Try to slide the two into the 10 and have the four contact the eight. We'll see what she does here. Looks like she's going to play it safe and just take the count. Almost a hockey bounce. But returns the favor with an open frame. Three pins, still the advantage for Team Kent and Ermish. Hey, there's a Suzanne Rondi spotting. Hi, Suzanne. If anybody's looking for Suzanne Rondi, she is here at Classic Lanes Greenfield. Jacob Kent, living in the Appleton area now. One of the sons of Hall of Famer Doug Kent, as he packs 10 back that you missed on that one. I apologize. Missing the cut. So Welch, wearing the purple tartan. I dig the jersey. I dig the colors. I dig the pattern. But he needs to dig himself a strike, try to get his team hanging tight within three pins. Welch on target line, and the solid nine. And that's the thing is these patterns break down. Once again, lots of games on this middle road pattern before we made it to the live stream. Bowler's got to find a way to trick it through the front part of the lane, not have it hook early, but then those balls can get really aggressive the last few feet, slice right through the one three, take the five straight off the nine. There was nothing really near it for Welch on that situation. Welch on line and gets it to go. Oh, Michael Felder here, she's been high the last two shots. Let's see if she trusts this one a little bit more. And there's the first strike on the live stream from Michael Felder. As she right now keeps her team within three pins. However, Ermish can step up. And she's got a chance to take the lead out to 13. And that one really far. That was a ball change. That was a scenery change. And the 1, 2, and 10 now the combination. And much more makeable than the 2, 4, 8, 10. Ermish left in the fifth. And hooks past the headpin, gets the 2, 10 out of it. That's a tad odd. Remember, it's 25th anniversary here at Classic Lanes in Greenfield. Celebrate that 25th anniversary. Look for those specials, classiclanesgreenfield.net. Jacob Kent looking for something special here. Eighth frame and gets a pin off the sideboard to take down that nine pin. So maximum 205 here 
for Irmish and Kent. However, Welch and Michael Felder can put 224 on the board. And Welch, let's see what he's doing here. Looks like he's just sliding the feet a little farther left than he did last time on this lane. Going to keep it a little straighter down the lane, and there you go. Huge double for Welch and Michael Felder. And that's the thing with these Baker formats. I mean, you're out there normally yourself pulling a step lighter game as an individual. You get a frame or two to make an adjustment. Uh, you're throwing five shots, five first balls, and your teammates throwing five. Not much time to go soul, go soul searching. That needs some help, and right through the nose. 3 6 10. For Aaron Michael Felder. Michael Felder, 578 for her three qualifying games, but really helped out keeping her team in it in Baker. Baker games at 214 and 226 for Welch and Michael Felder. They were the fourth place after the initial part of qualifying. The two Baker games solidify them in that fourth position. And you see the 10 wiggle jiggle and not go down. And now Michael Felder just playing spectator the rest of the way out. She's done this game. Welch can strike out from 189, but it may not matter. As you mentioned, 205. Maximum to be posted, yet possible for Ermish and Kent. You see that ball coming late again for Ermish, and that's half. Half is great in baseball. Half is never good in the sport of bowling. And this is a tough conversion. I would actually give her, on the way this pattern's broken down, a 50-50 shot at getting all five down. You can hit it firm, leave the seven, chop the five off. It's going to be an interesting conversion attempt here. You see a little footwork issue for Irmish at the line, and we mentioned the chop. And right back, we're basically now, Jacob Kent's got a punch out in the 10th that's going to force Welch to mark. And kids, who says doubles can't be huge nowadays? We've seen one in this match, and that's going to be the difference if things finish status quo. Loser to this match takes home $350. Winner of this match will go home with no less than $500. And there's $1,000 waiting on top for whatever team takes the championship here in the Wisconsin Mixed Doubles Classic. Welch getting a little antsy. Kind of knows what he needs. Doesn't need much right now. Jacob Kent does a strike on this shot. Welch just seems to pitch it down the middle. And will the 10 go? No. So now it's just stay behind the foul line. Don't set yourself on fire. And Will Welch and Aaron Michael Felder will advance to the semifinal match. I made sure I said that loud enough that Will could hear me, as you saw by his chuckle right there. We'll see what Welch and Michael Feller talk about between the games, too, because right now, uh, I was assuming Bears would want to finish for his team last. They would probably leave the same lineup for Welch and Michael Felder. Bears and Zwiefelhofer get two balls in each lane, make their lane choice, and then... We'll see what Welch and Michael Felder decide to do if they'll stay in those same lanes or if they'll switch, but if they're not forced to switch, they don't get any additional practice. There's the behind the foul line. There's the down the lane, and there is your winner of match number one. So we're going to let these players finish. Your next match will be Dave Bears and Katie Zwiefelhofer against Aaron Michael Felder and Will Welch in this Wisconsin Mixed Doubles Classic. Make sure you don't leave the live stream. We'll be back with some...
quality commentary in a few minutes.
All right, I got the drunk's attention at the bar, especially that Janicki guy. Yeah. That troublemaker. Hey, I had no gutter balls today. Good God. That's true. You had no gutter balls today. So, so we've got Dave Bears, Katie Zwiefelhofer. They've decided that they're going to be finishing the match second. So we're seeing Katie Zwiefelhofer finish her start on the left lane, lane 13. Once again, single game Baker in the stepladder. And he did get to see Michael Felder and Welch get one shot of practice. They were moved. They decided they wanted to move their lineup. Welch wanted to be in the 10th frame. So it forced them to move lanes. Otherwise, it would not normally receive the practice. So with that practice, already in the books with the lane movement. And the easy conversion from Zwiefelhofer. Dad Steve here watching. Steve, a stalwart in the bowling centers for many years watching. I remember back in the days when Katie was in high school. God, we're all old now. Steve would come in and watch her when Katie was bowling for Racine Park. Of course, Katie, great college career at UW-Whitewater and now the coach at Carthage University. And we'll see if this suggestion backfires with the lane movement as we saw Michael Felder struggle last match and now comes out Barry's 10 back. Let's see if that strategy by Barry's and Zwiefelhofer doesn't backfire on him. Will Welch second frame comes high and Welch that's not the pin you want to see leave that 3-6-10 combo for a breakup. That makes it a little bit tougher. Still bounced the ball off the right side of the three pin into the 10 for the textbook conversion. And that needs to get right between them, and it does. <laughs> Clean through two for Welch Michaelfelder. Bears Zwiefelhofer looking. For their first strike here in the second frame, it's really, in, well, you talk about a guy that's Hall of Fame potential in some Hall of Fames already. And who knows, he might even be a player that can get in the USBC Hall of Fame someday if he can get another eagle or two under his belt. Dave Barras, there you see, not too deep, but the problem is a little shallow angle on the end. Leaves the 10 pin. Hey, Dave. Getting that spare ball. Was hoping not to use it. Dave using urethane to go after that 10 pin. Of course, that purple hammer. There were a lot of staffers with Brunswick Radical and <laughs> that loved seeing all those brands come on board from the Ebonite purchase. And uh, yeah, purple hammers everywhere nowadays. Let's see what Zwiefelhofer can do here. Her team down by a solitary stick, third frame. Much better on target line, but still hooked up a little early in another four pin. I was kind of surprised by how early it hooked up. Talking to some of the players earlier today, and they were talking about how this middle road pattern seemed like about 25, 30 feet down, and the ball would like pick up a little bit and then stop picking up, and it was a little weird to read the ball, and then they make a move, and it just didn't seem to want to do the same thing twice. As a college coach, you got to make those spares and show your players how it's done. Can't be out here on live streams missing the easy spares. 
Splits, of course, hey, splits are splits. But that's one thing you definitely see with these young players that have bowled in college. Players like Bears and Welch that have bowled professionally at the regional level. Yeah, they know spares are important. Missed pins are missed opportunities. And the six pin goes to sleep. Ten pin stays erect at the end of lane 14. And we saw Michael Felder miss that single pin a little earlier. Wasn't a huge game in the opening step ladder match for Welch and Michael Felder. But they got themselves through it. And that needs some push, gets it. 10 back, 10 pin back in the pit, I should say. See Chad Kloss in the crowd yet. Chad, of course, owner of Bowler's Headquarters Pro Shop. You can still see Will Welch there a night or two a week using his bowling expertise. So if you're looking for a different look at your equipment as all 10 goes down for Welch, take a look at Bowler's Headquarters. John Schwengel, he was here as well. I think John's still here. There's John. Waiting in the wings for the winner of this match, Ryan Zagar and Kristen Neider. Bears can't get the 10 to go again. That's been the problem on anybody on 14 today. You get the ball, it seems a little easier to get to the pocket for the player on 14 than 13. Problem is, Getting that ball to finish. No problem there for Bears. On the cover, keeps his team clean. Bears and Zwiefelhofer wishing it was a nine pin tap finals right now, but um, <laughs> this is quality bowling. No nine pin tap here. Yeah, and then you make the move, and it doesn't want to hook up as hard. Looks like Katie may have picked up the speed a little bit as well. And the fifth consecutive nine count for Bears and Zwiefelhofer. But the thing is, it's just like the opening match. We saw a double make the difference. You keep putting spares on the board, you're going to keep yourself in contention as tough as this pattern is broken down to, it seems like, with Middle Road. And Team BZ... Perfect on single pin spare attempts. And here's Michael Felder with a chance to put that all important double on the board. Get her team up by 13 pins if that double does occur. There it is, 10 down. Big double for Welch Michaelfelder. And now can Will Welch extend it out three in a row? Sixth frame, Welch looking for that turkey. Oh, cave in the 4-9. Not your fault, Will Welch, not your fault. <laughs> he just came back and said, that's one for us. Well, they can smile for a moment, but they are far from close to locking up any advantage in this match. Bears looks to make the adjustment. Can he get the 10 to go that time? Go light, shake him up, get rid of that 10. And there's still 246 possible on the board for Bears and Zwiefelhofer.
But in order to do that, Katie's going to have to put up a double for her team here in frame seven. Oh, rattle them around. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, do not try to throw a strike like that at home. You must be a trained professional to mix pins like that. I believe all three ladies we've seen so far have all bowled in PWBA regionals over the last several years. A couple of bowled national events. I know Courtney Ermers bowled some national stuff in 2021. Katie bowled in 2019. See what Michael Felder can do here. Trying to get the team four bagger. Six around the ten. It got close once, hit the flat cutter, got close again, went around it, and said, no, not this time. And not that spares are huge at any point in the game. They always are, but uh, this is a really huge one right now. Michael Felder, you see you're taking a second. At the back of the ball return, you saw the huge inhale, the huge exhale to try to relax. And then it's just keeping the focus. Oh, dead on it. Dead on it for Aaron Michael Felder. But that's the opening. They could ill afford. Give Bears and Zwiefelhofer is now both these teams practically even in the match. If Bears can strike in his half of the eighth frame, we see the strike for Welch. Now can Bears match and get his team even in this game? We'll let the pins in the crowd tell you what's happening here on this shot. Stepping it out a bit. He likes it. Can't get the messenger to take the 10 down. That is just everyone's nemesis on 14. Two 10 pins. After further review and discussion, we're going to get that 10 pin out of the way. It's a little too close, and you know, Dave's smart right here because he knows if the ball were to touch any part of that pin in the flat gutter, yeah, we're going to get rid of that single pin here. Yeah, because if the ball touches it before it makes contact with the 10, it would be considered a dead ball, and the spare would not count. So Dave's doing the smart thing here. He took a look at it first, said, I can shoot at it, and he took a second look at it, and he goes, yeah, we better not. So, so there we go. We've got the 10-pin out of the way. <laughs> Crack staff here at Classic Lanes Greenfield. All over getting things done. Wait till the pin clears, and then we'll get barriers coming up for the conversion. Uh, the chiseled professionalism of Dave Barris. You know, he, knew, he knew what needed to be done. He didn't get frustrated, didn't get upset. It's a great thing for you young kids watching out there to realize the pin's still going to be there and knock down in a minute or so. Take the time to do it the right way. Looking to knock all 10 downs we've offered. Beautiful setup in the 10th. So 225 the max now for Zwiefelhofer and Beres. Michael Felder and Welch pacing at 218 with a 248 max. 
So you talk about the uh, shot of the day here from Michael Felder. This is it. Foundation frame. She likes it. She gets a six to take the ten. And another double on the board for Welch and Michael Felder. No. Nope. Welch here. Knows the situation. Strike here ends it. Anything less with a bad count. Could be trouble. Oh, pures it. And forcing the team to, lose, to move lanes. Didn't work, but I'll tell you what. I mean, you look at it, the, the, the 10-pin in the eighth frame for Bears. I mean, that, that's a big one right there. He throws a great shot. He gets the wrap 10. I mean, he had a, a week 10 earlier. They made all their spares to keep it close. And, well, that would have been interesting to shot before. But that's going to end the run for Bears and Zwiefelhofer, and that means Kristen Neidert and Ryan Zagar will be coming on, battling Welch and Michael Felder. Bears and Zwiefelhofer taking home $500 for their third place effort today. So we'll let the players finish the match here. And of course, when it doesn't matter, they fall. Seems to be the rule in bowling. It's like the uh, old 92.2% fill rate back in my extra frame days on the fill ball. So our championship match, Niter Zagar versus Welch Michaelfelder. Be back with that. Momentarily, stay tuned on Facebook Live.
Oh, the, the, the drunks are barely awake back there. Come on. All right, there we go. Now they're rowdy. So Kristen Nieder, Ryan Zagar decide they want to finish first. That let Welch and Michael Felder decide if they wanted to have Welch still bowl the 10 frames, they'd switch lanes again. Decide not to do that, so Mike, Michael Felder's going to have the 10th frame for this team as Welch. Leaves the temp and Welch struggled a little bit today. A couple of games in the 1As and fired off 279 with the last 11, his final game of regular qualifying. As we mentioned earlier, they shot 440 for two Baker games. Uh, Nieder and Zagar uh, went absolutely nuts during qualifying. Wasn't the highest scoring pace in qualifying. Nieder led things with 684. Nieder at 684, Zagar at 709. And then they slapped another 480 pins on during two games of Baker, 258, 222. So your first look on the live stream here from Classic Lanes at Kristen Nieder. Nieder playing a very tight line. And once again, doesn't seem to matter what line you're trying to play on 14. It's either a 10 pin or all 10. There's, there's no in between. We saw Michael Felder solve the riddle more than Barras on lane 14 in the semifinal match. And she's going to probably need to do the same thing again here. In the championship match to have a chance against these two hot hands with Zagar and Nieder. Zagar, none of those players like Zwiefelhofer we've seen back in our Time Warner Cable Sports Channel TV days. Numerous times during high school and college. Numerous times once they've started bowling in adult leagues. He's another one of those players, his Jacob Kent teammate. Back in the days that Robert, Robert Morris taking home a couple of national intercollegiate team championship titles from the USBC. And here's Aaron Michael Felder. Three strikes and five attempts. Last game on this lane. Let's see what she can do here. And her third game on this pair, and wow. The big, saw that ball, the last five feet before the pocket really accelerate into the one three. And the two pin basically smashed the four straight back and went around the seven pin. So Michael Feller is going to take the polyester ball, take the lane out of play. Very direct, point A to point B. No problem on the cover. Well, it's Michael Feller down by one after two frames. Don't forget, everybody, lots of goings on here at Classic Lanes Greenfield. Big fundraiser benefit tomorrow. the Classic Lanes Junior Program. And uh, the beers are constantly changing on tap. Right now, Great Lakes Christmas Ale, Lining Kugel's Chocolate Dunkel just added to the tap list. No tap there for Welch. He likes his beer out of the bottle, apparently. As he takes all 10 down. Once again, $1,000 on top. $700 to the loser of this match. I want to thank Ralph Hibbard and Greenfield Gallery. Ooh, and that's tough for Nieder with the 410. Ralph Hibbard, Greenfield Gallery, adding $100 to the prize fund for the players today. If you're in any need of any auto racing memorabilia or you have a collection you're looking to sell, Get a hold of Ralph Hibbard on Facebook. 
numerous amounts of quality. Racing memorabilia, I saw he posted the other day with a picture of a Al Unser Sr. passing, posted some Al Unser photographs that were pretty cool from back in the day at Indy with the Roadsters. How about this shooter? Oh, ho, ho. Neater giving it a run. Don't blame her right now. It's all or nothing in a championship match. And her and Ryan are going to talk over that shot really quick before Ryan goes up. Is that the chocolate dunkle, Dave Barris? <laughs> I didn't get an answer from him before he sat down. All right, back to seriousness here. Ryan Zagar. Fourth frame for his team, looking to come back off that open frame. And Zagar strikes again. Two for two. Big scratch tournament tomorrow down at Castle Lanes in Racine. Talking to Ryan early, he said there were openings left, so uh, find him on Facebook if you want to get in. Always great stuff by Phil and Patty Anko. Appreciate their support over the years with our high school events, other tournaments we've done there. Of course, we're back for the 12th time this year with our Midwinter High School Classic, and you'll see that live streamed on New Year's Eve from Castle Lanes. And Michael Felder likes it. That's a big double for that team. Puts them up by 23 in this championship match. And I know bowling's that sport. A lot of people say, oh, you gotta win it twice. You gotta win it twice in a lot of tournaments because you're the top seed, but then you still have to bowl one more game. The thing is, you know the format going in. And you know there's going to be live stream coverage of the finals, so you need to do something to make it skate in the pocket right there, which Welch does, Team Turkey. And we'll see what Neater does for an adjustment. Neater. Balanced team effort during qualifying. Kristen Nieder, 684. To go with Ryan Zager, 709. And led the field by almost 80 pins over second place. Actually, it was 72 to be exact. Nieder on the head pin again and the 610. And, you know, that's, that's, that's a tough part sometimes. You're standing around. You're waiting for your match. You get some time to get loose on the pair. It stays on. But then you got to come back on, refire the competitive juices, and make things happen. Neater gets the two. No, she doesn't. She chops the six off the ten. And Zagar and Neater are finding themselves in a bunch of trouble right now. There you see that deep inside line from Zagar, that little baby hook on the end. And gets the five to go dancing down last. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it loud enough for her to hear, but I think Michael Felder's trying to work on a beverage contract right now. I think Michael Felder is working on a beverage contract possible. So we'll see what happens after the tournament's done. If she wins today, that could help her cause. But right now, she has to worry about getting her team's strike string out to four in a row. Looks to be on line. Comes a little high at the end. Breaks it up. Single pin remains. That pin being the number four. I think one of these days we should live stream the Cherry Master machines from various bowling centers. I see people do that from Vegas. They live stream the slot machines and they play them. I think we should do it with the Cherry Masters. We can get some really good live streams going. Michael 
Monica Felder making sure she's focused before that single pin conversion. Dead on it. That advantage right now, 44 pins. As Welch is up. The seventh frame. Doesn't like it off the hand. Wow. And the smirk on the way back lets you know that. Was that a Chad Claus special? Is that what I heard? Oh, okay. <laughs> the 5 7 out last. The joke around. And Nieder tries to get it back. She's not high that time. But as you see there, the 2 4 8 is the result. And the frames are running out quickly for our top seed. And uh, I don't care who you are. I don't care if it's anything more than somebody's cell phone behind you recording, showing a live stream. You get a few cameras behind you and a lot of people where you're the focus of attention. Uh, that may change the mindset a little bit. And uh, the shots that were working earlier in the day might not be working. Later on, and this is a, uh, a must convert for Nieder here. 248 gets them all to go. But right now, they're looking at a max score for Zagar and Nieder of 204. Where Welch and Michael Feller can pace out. Spare strike for 218. Zagar getting it done. Four for four, and he just came back. Told Niter, we got a chance. The other team still got to show up in the final three frames. But Michael Feller can make it go a long way to a short pier. A short sense of hope for the other team with a big strike here in the eighth frame. Needs to hold, wow, pure that, nothing left on the deck. And this is the biggest shot of the day for Welch. No other way to tell you that. Make it happen, you're going home a champion. And maybe felt that a little bit as that one slams up high for the 3 6. The spare here makes the 10th frame. Needing just a mark for Michael Feller to lock it up, regardless of what Nieder and Zagar do. There's a spare. As we mentioned, 204 the maximum. For Zagar and Nieder. That needs help to hold, can't get it to go. And then, unfortunately, for Nieder and Zagar, long afternoon to work is going to end up with a second place finish as there's already enough pins in the bank for Will Welch and Aaron Michaelfelder
Still, I mean, Zager and Nieder just plowed over everybody in brackets and pot games. Still a quality effort for them. Well, there's a four pin you don't see so often. As the two goes straight back when the head pin hits it. And the head pin just takes out the seven. Nothing gets near the four. Hi, Will Welch. You're standing in front of me. Can you, can you see down on the bottom of the rack right there? There's a, there's a microphone. Can you grab that for a second? Because I would just, just want to ask you a, a quick question before we, before we walk away as your partner now strikes to take home uh, $1,000 on the day. Uh, how, did, how, how did you decide that uh, you and Aaron were going to partner up for this event? Uh, we bowled, we bowled the, the city mix last year. And, okay. Uh, I started drilling her stuff last year, and she's a really good teammate, a very good player, as you can see. And yeah. the fact that she picked me over her, uh, her man, Jacob. <laughs> you should ask her that question. Well, I'm sure there'll be a discussion later on, but I wasn't going to bring that up during the live stream. So, so oh, don't, don't put that down yet. You get your handshakes and that kind of thing, but I want to I talk to Aaron as well in a second. But... Uh, yeah, a hell of a day for you guys. You're taking home $1,000. Uh, any, any Christmas plans for cash? I mean, you guys are splitting the 1000 obviously, but any Christmas plans at all? I have four dogs that go through a lot of toys. Oh, so There you go. That'll do a 226 to win the score of this championship match. And hugs and handshakes all the way around. Hey, Aaron, don't run away. There's a microphone there. I want to say hi to you for a second and talk to you. The for our team. I well, oh, no, no, no. We get to talk to you, too. So no doubt about it. So All he was right. just talking about, you know, what a, what a great partner you've been, you know, over, the, over, over this event. I have to give him event. some credit, too. So uh, did, the, did the ball change worry you a bit? I mean, the lane change. I mean, after mm -hmm. the first match, Bears and Zwiefelhofer said, we're going to switch, make you guys switch lanes. You didn't have to, but you did. Yep. Uh, any, did you, did they, it didn't seem to rally at all with that change. No, so I actually made a ball change in the middle of game one. Um, just as something that felt a little bit more comfortable in my hand. Okay. And Will and I talked before the second match. I still wasn't super comfortable with where I was, so I was okay switching. I wanted him to still have the 10th frame. And then for this game, I felt really comfortable on the right lane. I really liked my look on the right lane. and. Yeah. Um, thankfully, he's a great partner who has a whole lot of trust in me. And yeah. He said, stay on the right lane and do what you've been doing. Excellent. And you get to split so. the $1,000 first place prize at Will. Uh, what, what's the Christmas plans for your half of the cash? I don't know. Uh, Not sure yet. Well, okay. Well, I'll be ready for one at the bar when you're done. See everybody, $1,000. <laughs> They'll be splitting. Thanks, Thank Lyron, for bowling. Appreciate that. And with that, we're going to wrap up today's live stream here from Classic Lanes in Greenfield. Please stop down during the holidays. Great New Year's specials as well, as well if you're looking to do something on New Year's Eve. And I like this. Sign of a champion, young players. If you're looking right now, just because you lost one match doesn't mean you can't learn from it and do something else. As you see, Kristen Neider back out, wanting to make sure that she's better next time she hits the lane. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hey, parents, take the kids bowling because you know they're going to have fun for life. And we'll see you from our next event at Classic Lanes in Greenfield. Merry Christmas, everyone.